This is the first lecture on structural mechanics in civil and structural engineering. In this lecture, I will answer three key questions. These questions are, what does it mean by structural mechanics? Second is, how do we use structural mechanics to design and analyze structures? The third is, why everything that we see around us is in equilibrium? Let's dive into this lecture. Hey friends, if you're new here, I'm Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer in structural engineering and design at a London University. What does it mean by structural mechanics? In very simple terms, structural mechanics is about behavior of any structure under mechanical loads. These loads cause stresses, bending of a beam, buckling or instability of a beam torsion of a shaft, vibration of a bridge, first bending of a beam. This is a symmetrical sponge beam. When the beam is bent, top portion stretches and bottom portion compresses. This phenomena is termed as bending of the beam. It is important to note that the neutral axis which passes through midsection of the beam, it remains neutral. It does not have any stretching or it does not have any squashing. A real life example. The first example that I like is this bench where it is fixed at one end and free at other end. Maximum bending is applied at the portion where it is fixed. This is a picture which I took at Stratford DLR station in London. This beam is supporting the slab and here it has got larger depth because the bending is going to be maximum at the fixed end. The third is in a train here, these two chairs are fixed at the end and they are free at the other end. Buckling. Buckling is instability which limits the load carrying capacity of a member. A steel column is buckling and in second figure, reinforced concrete column is buckling. Torsion is twisting. It is moment when we twist a cylindrical shaft, it will induce torsion in the member. Vibration in bridges, it should be avoided by all means. Wherever structures are subjected to dynamic loading, they cause vibrations. And vibration is a key element in designing bridges. When Millennium Bridge was constructed, it was really wobbly. And then structural engineers, they put some devices to make it vibration free. Engineering or structural mechanics, it is divided into two parts. First is statics where forces and their effects are studied at rest. And other is dynamics where forces and their resulting effects are in motion. These are the topics which I will be covering in my next videos in statics, where we will be talking about equilibrium, center of mass and cross-section properties, bending shear and torsion, buckling pre-stress and stress distribution, spans and deflections. And then in dynamics, we will talk about energy exchange, pendulum, free vibration, resonance and damping. What these terms are, you will see in subsequent lectures. How does structural mechanics helps us to design and in fact analyze these structures. Pretty much anything can be designed and analyzed using first principles, which means that basic loading and their effects. By measuring the loads and their behavior, we can design any structures. Literally, we do not need any design codes to design structures. You can design a bridge, you can design a building. In olden days, there weren't any design codes. They were designed by precedent. They were designed by basic principles. Almost everything that we do in structural or engineering mechanics, it is based on Newton's laws of motion. It is based on physics. So Newton's laws of motions were introduced by Sir Isaac Newton in 1687. The first law says that everything which is in a state of rest or a state of motion, it will remain in that state unless it is disturbed by some external force. So for example, if a car is moving on a surface which does not have any friction at all, it will keep moving. Moving. It will not stop unless it is stopped by some braking system. Unless if the surface is not smooth, it is rough. That's the reason that roads mainly have a rough surface so that braking can be applied. The second law is related to definition of force. So force is equal to mass into acceleration. So change of motion is proportional to force impressed and it takes place in the direction of force. So in simple terms, force is equal to mass into acceleration, where acceleration is equal to velocity over time. This third and most important law is 
to every action there is equal and opposite reaction and this applies to design of any structural civil or mechanical system when we apply loading on structures they will have reactions and it is important that these are balanced if we are standing on a floor we are applying our reaction to the floor which should be equal and opposite if the ground is soft then the reaction is not equal and opposite we will be disbalanced we cannot walk on water because it will not provide us sufficient reaction what is equilibrium equilibrium is unchanging state where everything is balanced Equilibrium can be achieved when all forces that we apply on a structure, loads including reactions and moments, it is equal to zero. The structure will be in balance and no motion will occur if it is in equilibrium. And here are some examples of equilibrium. A very good example is this barrier which has counterweight. So when we apply load on this counterweight, this barrier is going to open. The next example of this fiber reinforced polymer bridge, it has counterweight at the end. So when we apply some hydraulic jacking system to this counterweight, the bridge gets lifted. The third example is this beam, which is applying self weight on these scales at the ends. If we apply some loading, for example, a one kg or one pound, it is going to be equally distributed at the support. So reactions are going to be equally distributed. And third one is when we apply load exactly directly on top of it, the entire load is going to be distributed at the support and it will provide equal and opposite reaction. Neutral equilibrium is when potential energy is constant here a ball is resting on a surface which is a flat surface the second is stable equilibrium where potential energy is gained here ball cannot go left and right because of the geometry of the surface this is called stable equilibrium the third one is where ball is resting on a surface which has tendency to move left or right so potential energy is lost here this is termed as unstable equilibrium we try most of the time in any civil and mechanical system that the body remains in stable equilibrium this is a very good example of stable and unstable equilibrium a marker is supporting a ruler on left side it is in stable equilibrium on right side one side is supported on marker and other side is supported on flat floor and this is not a stable equilibrium what does it mean by force force is equal to mass into acceleration the key thing to remember here is that force is a vector it has magnitude it has direction it has point of application and the units of the force are newton which means that force required to, for acceleration of one meter per second square on a mass of one kg what does it mean by weight weight is equal to mass into acceleration due to gravity gravity means that earth pulls everything towards its center that is termed as gravity so f is equal to m times g where g is gravitational acceleration which is equal to 9.81 meter per second square the key thing here is that gravitational acceleration it is different on different parts of earth and it varies on different planets as well so for example if a body weighs 100 kg it will be one sixth on moon mass on the other hand remains constant the unit of weight is newton or kilonewton similar to force where unit is newton or kilonewton force vectors any force can be broken down into horizontal and vertical component and the reason is we want to simplify the analysis so if force f is given to us we can divide it into f2 and f1 all we need is the angle where force is inclined and the value of force and we will need simple trigonometry to be able to work out the resultant now here is a revision of basic trigonometry right triangle is a triangle where two sides are perpendicular hypotenuse of the right triangle is the side opposite to the 90 degree angle so here side opposite to 90 degree angle is this one the side which is opposite to the angle considered which is theta in this case is denoted by a and side which is adjacent is denoted by b here are some very important relations for trigonometry which we will be using throughout this lecture series in fact the sine theta is equal to 
opposite a divided by hypotenuse cos theta is equal to adjacent which is b divided by hypotenuse and tangent of theta is equal to opposite which is a divided by adjacent which is b now i come to very important relation which you'll be using forever in civil structural engineering or mechanical engineering which is this pythagoras theorem which means that opposite square plus adjacent square is equal to hypotenuse square from where if two things are given we can find out the third resultant force how do we work out resultant force if two forces are given to us f2 and f1 the resultant is simply hypotenuse the resultant force f square is equal to f1 square plus f2 square and the angle between these two forces if the forces are given can be found out by f2 over f1 similar to what we did earlier which was opposite divided by adjacent moment is really very important concept in structural mechanics moment is the rotational effect of force about a point it has magnitude and it has direction it can be clockwise or anti-clockwise what does it mean by moment it is equal to force times distance but that distance has to be a perpendicular distance if it is in the same direction as load then it will not apply a moment for example if i'm applying a point load over here it will cause some moment if i apply point load in this direction there is no perpendicular distance here for moment we need to have perpendicular distance and unit of moment is newton into meter or kilonewton into meter equations of equilibrium they are really very important and i will talk about two dimensional structures for equilibrium all forces acting on a body should be equal to zero if it is a two-dimensional system then we need summation of all forces in horizontal direction equal to zero summation of all forces in vertical direction equal to zero and summation of moment equal to zero how about if we have three-dimensional structures if we are modeling a structure in three dimensions then it will have three axes x y and z so forces and moments in x y and z direction should be equal to zero for a structure to be in equilibrium remember that a structure can be modeled in two dimensions and it can be modeled in three dimensions as well typical examples are a beam can be modeled easily in two dimension a frame which has got two columns and a beam can be modeled in two dimensions truss can be modeled in two dimensions as well three dimensional structures can include if you are modeling a dam if you are modeling a space truss it can be modeled in three dimensions real structures are actually three dimensional so we should model everything in three dimensional as far as it is possible